Yo, what's good bro? In this video we'll be continuing our little magic game on Roblox and in the last video the last thing we did was we made the VFX for the wand and also the VFX for the first spell. If you haven't watched the other two parts just go ahead and watch it, they're the previous two uploads you can probably find them just type it on YouTube like creating a magic game on Roblox or something and you're probably gonna find it. And also I went ahead and finished that script that we were making by the end of the last video. I finished it off camera but I'm going to show what it does right now and then I'm going to explain what I did with the script. So I'm gonna give you a little peek of the script actually. So this, I believe this was the spell that we were doing. No, this was the thing that we were doing, right? It's a lot longer now. It's actually like 150 lines of code. And this is also another script that we use for the spell system. And I'm going to show you right now what it does. All right, so we're here in the match and the spell that we made is the Either Blast, right? And the Either Blast, all it does is it shoots out a projectile with VFX. I managed to put it like a little hitbox. Like the effects, it's actually emitted from the hitbox. And if the hitbox touches the player, then it ragdolls the player and it pushes them backwards. You're going to see what I mean now. So I have the wand out, right? And if I press 1, I select the spell that we have over here. Actually, let me just put it like this so you can see it a lot better. Number 1 is either blast and just watch this. The first animation, since I haven't added like something to fix that first animation. Because Roblox has a weird animation bug in which if the animation is played for the first time, the animation plays like instantly and it doesn't show itself very well. But if we cast it a second time, then you see that we can actually see the spell a lot better. I also added a cooldown so I can't spam the spell. And the spell actually looks pretty nice, right? And also another thing that you might notice is that the wand actually glows a little bit as well, see? It has a little VFX thing, the wand, before it actually throws the effect. And this is what happens when the VFX collides with a player. Watch this. Boom. Ragdolls and pushes him backwards. And if we put him over here so you can see what happens in the other client. If I do that again, you can see the spell is coming my way. Oh, the time ended back at the match now you're gonna see what happens when the player collides with the spell so just watch this one i'm going to throw the spell from this side collides and it pushes you backwards of course it it looks kind of weird in terms of how it actually touches the player because we're in studio and it's not like a hundred percent like when you do stuff on studio, depending on your internet and all that stuff, you might be a little bit delayed. But I, I think in game it will work pretty well. So let's just do that again. And there you go. It pushes him backwards a little bit. And this is just like the first spell. The spell that every single person is going to spawn with. And if I throw him off the platform, hopefully this one does it. Oh. Okay, so the next one will throw him out the platform. You're going to see that when he dies touches the water he dies I don't know why he flung like that but we return to the lobby because I won the match right now I'm going to show you the script that I used for the actual spell so this is the spell manager each time you press the key one two three four or five this function will retrieve what no this function will retrieve what key was it that you press and that lets you select the spell right and it changes the select spell value of the character i mean of the player to the name of the spell that you have equipped to the key that you just pressed right we saw that in the previous video and then when you cast a spell you cast a spell when you click and essentially you get the character the player values folder the selected spell value that uh, remember the selected spell value is just a value that's inside the the player actually let me show you that right now just in case you haven't seen it all right so we're here if we click players and then we click i am ludius we're gonna see this folder called player values and here we have the equipped spell which is just the keys right and each of these keys can have a different value inside of them number one is either blast because as you can see here that's the one that we have on the first key of the hot bar and then it's like two three four and five two three four and five they're empty and that's why they're empty here as well and then we have own spells and own spells is just the spells that you own i'm gonna make it in the future so that you can you know switch between like equip the the own spells into like the equip spells but for now we don't have that I'm gonna make that on a future video i guess or maybe on another series i don't know and then we have here the selected spell which essentially is the spell that gets equipped when you press the key for example one that has either blast equipped in it and as you can see change to either blast here when you press that key and if i press two then it changes to nothing because the second key 
meaning this one over here is nothing and that's when you press 2 it changes to nothing if i press 1 again it changes to either blast and it pretty much just lets me select what spell i want to cast and that's essentially how this folder works here so let's go back to the script real quick okay so in this part which is the part when we actually find the spell that we need to cast in this module there are a couple of things that i need you to know in case you are making like a skill system or anything like that so you remember the player values folder right the one i just showed you they had like the equipped spells folder and in that equipped spells, fo spells folder we had all the keys right so if you want to add cooldown all you need to do is just when it finds the actual spell in this module right you just want to add a cooldown and you're going to store that cooldown in the key that the, the player just pressed inside the player values folder so essentially what does this mean i created a cooldown by just creating a bool value and naming it cooldown as you can see right here and i stored it in the select in the key that the player just pressed and this is what represents that the is selected spell v and that is just like one two three four or five in the equipped spells folder right and then as you can see if this pretty much just finds what spell we're trying to cast and if that spell exists and this is what actually casts the spell this is the this the function to cast the spell inside this module right you can see here that the either blast has a element here called spell cast function and that is a function that actually casts the spell you gotta pass the character to that function right and that's pretty much what we did last time and also something that you want to do is that we want to make the selected spell meaning the selected key equal to kneel because we don't have we don't want to have a selected spell after we cast the spell right because otherwise the player might just so i mean we just want the player to have to select his spell again after he casts any spell right and then here you wait the duration of the cooldown and you might be wait how do i know the duration of the cooldown well in the spells module this spells table this is like the either blast and every spell is going to have these elements right here so we have the name element the cooldown element the mana cost element and the spell cast function so as you can see there's um cooldown element here and we get that in the previous script by just doing v.cooldown and then after it waits the amount of seconds assigned to that cooldown then it just destroys the cooldown value that we created over here and you might be well how does the cooldown actually work well that's pretty simple you just have to add over here if there is no cooldown instance or no instance called cooldown inside the key that the player just pressed in the player values folder right then you just add that as a condition and that pretty much will just add a cooldown to your game and that's all you gotta do just create a cooldown create an instance called cooldown and store it inside the key that the player just pressed not the actual key but what you're using to represent the key in the workspace right and just like check if that instance exists inside the key and if it doesn't exist, then it will mean that the key is not on cooldown, right? Right, And that's pretty much how you do cooldowns. It's pretty simple, pretty straight, pretty straightforward. And then we have here the spells. And this is how I created the actual spell. Now, this will get messy. And I'm not expecting you to understand all of it. Because, you know, I have my own way of coding things. And it will take a while for anyone to understand it. But essentially, I'm going to try to explain it as best as I can. So... First, we have the variables that we're going to be needing. We have the humanoid from the character, the humanoid root part, the wand, and we also have the caster player. And this is just like the player instance of the caster or the player that is trying to cast the spell. And then I just added as a condition in order to cast the spell that you need to find the humanoid. You need to find the humanoid root part or meaning like the humanoid needs to exist and the humanoid root part needs to exist. The wand needs to exist and also the player instance needs to exist. And this is just for the bug and all the sprints that you see over here. Then you have here like the cast VFX part because the wand has a part inside of it that we use to know where the little little like light thing in the wand needs to be shown before the spell is actually casted. Then we find the animations because we have here our animations folder, right? And you just gotta find the animations depending on how you store your animations here. So I got the animations got the vfx 
because we also we also have our VFX folder over here, right? You'll find the corresponding VFX for the spell, and in here we have either blast, and we also have either blast hit, and we have the default cast wind up VFX. This is the effect for the wand. This is the effect for the actual like projectile, and this is the VFX that would play when the projectile hits a humanoid, essentially. So that little explosion thingy that you saw in the beginning, this is the VFX. And okay, so we got the attachment because inside this part we have attachments, right? And what I did is I just cloned the attachment and I put it inside the wand cast VFX part, which is the, the part that is going to be on the tip of the wand. It waited a little bit and the reason why I have to wait before emitting is because Roblox has a weird like bug where if you don't add this, then it might not emit the part that you want. Why is this? I don't know, but this is just how I solved it. I don't know if this is the best way to go about it, but that's just what I did. And then I changed the priority of the animation track for the spell casting animation. And you might be, why? Well, because if you don't do that, then the animation will blend with the idle animation of, you know, the stance of the one stance essentially and it, it will look pretty weird so you just you want to make it have higher priority and that's what i did the one stance animation is action one and i just set this to action two and then i play the default cast animation i wait until it's about half the length of the animation right because that's when the spell actually needs to be cast because there's like a wind up part in the animation, right? And then I destroy the attachment and the attachment, remember the attachment is this thing that contains like the the wind up animation on the tip of the one, not the wind up animation, the wind up VFX, my bad. And then here I created the interesting thing, which is the hitbox, right? So I created the hitbox. This is what I did. Just instance this new part come on workspace and then I change the network owner to the caster and you might be wait 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 what, what, what is networks why did you do this what is said network owner it's kind of hard to explain but essentially it makes instead of the so essentially it makes the server replicate the results that are in the client and not vice versa because what the game actually does the majority of the time is that it your client copies whatever is in the server and this just say okay for this particular part you're going to copy what's in the client and essentially that lets the player or the caster like have an updated view on the spell and also makes the spell not be laggy or choppy or teleporting and that's pretty much what it does so if, if you have a projectile and you see that your projectile is kind of like teleporting a little bit or it's not moving as smoothly when you are at a body velocity or linear velocity then it might be because the network owner is set to the server and you want to make it set to a client it depends on the case as well but in this case it fits perfectly you can investigate a little bit a little bit more about that if you're interested and then you might be okay then what's this hitbox.shape this is just something that i use to change the hitbox of the like the shape of the hitbox to be a ball instead of a box and it might be why well because it's a spell it's not it's more realistic to have a hitbox that is a sphere not a square right and then we have hitbox.size i just said this size you can test the size by just inserting a part over here and comparing it to a character that's what i did and then i got it and i just decided this was the best size to go for you want to make sure also that with your hitboxes, can collide is equal to false, massless is equal to true, and transparency is equal to one, and of course that anchored is equal to false. And you might well, well, not not for all. Like the the anchored, yeah, actually, yeah, you want to have the anchored equal to false as well. But what essentially this does is, if you have can collide on for your hitboxes, then it might push the character when they touch the hitbox, and we don't want that. And then here. If you have the massless on, essentially th this, if you have your hitbox and it's welded to a player, right? Which a lot of the times you might have it welded to a player if you are making like, I don't know, like a combat system, for example. 
then your hitbox if it's loaded to the player it might wait a little something and wait i mean like actual weight like pounds or kilos i don't know and it might slow down the actual rotation or movement of your character and it's happened to me before and it's not fun working around that so you always want to make sure that you have this equal to false when you're dealing with hitboxes and the transparency is pretty much obvious you don't want your hitbox to be visible and the anchor this is also important if you're planning to add like body velocity to your hitbox or if you're making a combat system and it's going to be welded to the character it's very important for you to have anchored equal to false because if you don't you're gonna spend a lot of time trying to fix this just make sure that all of these things are exactly as i have it in my script and you won't have any issues with hitboxes and then after that the hitbox is created right you have to get this right here which is called actual hrpc frame which stands for actual humanoid root part c frame you might be confused because i know that you've probably never seen this before but essentially i created a function that lets me retrieve the position on the client of any object in the workspace and you might be why did you do that well essentially i did that because as i said before the server usually has a little delay in what's actually happening in all the clients and all the clients are are kind of like different on what they're seeing depending on how fast your computer is and all that but essentially if you want the spell to go in like the perfect direction just where the character is looking at you need to get the actual C frame of whatever you're trying to base the spell from and in this case it's going to start from the human root part right because that's what we use to position the spell so i got the position on the client of the client if that made sense and then i just multiplied that by a c frame to position the hitbox in front of the client because if you don't do this then it's going to position it a little bit delayed in the actual like spell and it's going to for example if i'm moving to the right and i just don't do this and i just get this normally from the server if i'm moving to the right then the spell will actually appear a little bit to my left when i cast it because this the, the server is a little bit delayed in terms of what's happening in the client and as you may know the character is handled by the client and therefore your spell will not be like a hundred percent like positioned correctly in the workspace so if you want to avoid that just make a function using a a bindable function to get the location of the humanoid root part and if you don't know how to do it then i'll just give you i'll just show you the script i won't explain it because it's pretty self-explanatory i think dm me on discord if you don't understand it i'll probably respond if i'm not too busy i mean life's been really busy lately but try to dm me i'll probably respond this is the script that i used it for you just pass the instance that you want and then you just return the c frame of the instance and it will get you the position of that instance or the c frame of that instance i should say in that client so we're back here then i just positioned it in front of the character and then i added the vfx to the hitbox meaning the vfx like the actual vfx of the spell of the projectile but I, the way i did that is that i just cloned the vfx that we have right here the attachment and not the part the attachment and i put that attachment inside the hitbox and that just pretty much puts the effect inside the hitbox and it just looks perfectly as you saw at the beginning and then i added a body velocity yeah this is just the values that are used the higher these numbers are like these numbers the faster it will go i think this one works perfectly because you actually need to see the projectile to parry the projectile and we will be making the parry in a moment and then the hitbox thing is is also pretty straightforward so you pretty much just detect if what you touched was a humanoid by touch the parent of time first house humanoid this is one of the first things you learn in scripting by doing kill breaks and stuff and then you get like the character touch the parent and that player you can get the player by you know typing game dot get service colon get player from character and essentially if the character is linked to a player instance then it will return the player instance and therefore it will make this variable equal to a player instance then you can actually 
do whatever the hitbox is supposed to do because you don't want a friendly fire in here right you know how kids be they be stupid and <laughs> if i activate a friendly friendly fire in this game then people like the kids are just gonna get mad with each other bro because like they, they be doing some goofy stuff i don't want to have friendly fire in my game and this is what i use to prevent it and essentially now we gotta play the hitbox like the hitbox the hit no not the hitbox the hit via bro what's wrong with me i can't speak now we gotta play the hit vfx and the hit vfx is essentially this one which is the little explosion thing that it's supposed to play when a character hits the projectile and essentially same thing i just I just got the VFX and I, this time I actually got the actual part and I positioned it where the spell was and I haven't played it but I positioned it where the projectile was when it touched the humanoid and then I destroyed the hitbox and meaning I destroyed the projectile right because the hit the VFX is inside the projectile I mean the VFX is inside the projectile and the projectile is pretty much the hitbox and then what I did was I played every single VFX that's supposed to be inside this this attachment. I played it 20. I, I made it emit 25 particles essentially, and it has two particles, so in total it emits 50 particles, and it gives that little explosion VFX, right? What else? And also, this is what I used to ragdoll the character. I didn't make the actual ragdoll script. I won't lie to you. If you want a good ragdoll script for R6, I recommend you get this ragdoll script. Uh, if you if you type in in Google like plug and play ragdoll script or plug and play R6 ragdoll script, you will get this script, which which is actually insanely good and it works insanely good in every single game that I've tried it on. And you won't have to really script ragdoll. It, it, it essentially just it gives all the characters in the game, all the players, right? A instance called Ragdoll Trigger, and if you if you set that equal to true, then the player will be ragdolled, and if you set that equal to false, then the player will be back to normal. It's insanely good. You don't have to script ragdoll. You can just get the script, and you might be wouldn't it be like cool to learn how to create a ragdoll script? And I agree. Yeah, it would be pretty cool to learn how to create a ragdoll. But I'm not losing my time with that when I have this script already which works insanely good you do you my guy i'm going to spare myself the pain <laughs> so i wrangled the player i created an, an event which essentially lets me wrangle a player for a specific amount of time i think it's up here is it here yeah here you can see that i have the event that it lets me ragdoll the player for a specific amount of time and it connects that to another function it's, i just made events and functions that let me you know set the ragdoll for a specific amount of time because in the future i might be using this a lot more right and of course this the script that i made for this is connected to the system that the person that made this script made and that's the beauty about scripting that if you know how to do stuff you can actually enhance what other people have done and that's pretty much what i did or not enhancing because i didn't really enhance it but you can make it work like you want it to work you can make it you can adapt it to work specifically for the things that you want and this is pretty much what i did with this radical script that i got and it's free and now the last thing we gotta do is push the character once the projectile touches the character right and what, all you gotta do is just create another body velocity because we made a body velocity up here that is that pushes the hitbox forward in the direction of the character oh by the way i forgot to explain it so if you want the body velocity to go in the same direction that the character is looking what you have to do is get the part or the the part c frame of whatever of whatever you want it to take as a reference and then you do look vector and essentially it gets the direction that any part is looking at the part itself you get the c frame of the part and then you add look vector after that and that gets you like the direction that the part is looking at and then this over here the times 50 is essentially what determines like which what force the body velocity is going to push the part if that made sense and yeah I, I just repeated the same process over here but essentially instead of being with the hitbox pushing the hitbox I made it push the character that it touched as you can see it says touched 
character the way for child human the root part so i got the human the root part and then i just pushed it and also something that you might notice here is that the y property not the y property the the, the y axis here is set to zero and you might be why is that well if you set one of these x's to zero then it won't make absolutely no force it won't apply any force to that axis meaning that it will be affected by gravity if i were to make this ten thousand, then it would just push the character like completely in a completely linear manner but since i don't want that i want it to actually fall as it's pushing it backwards because it looks more realistic right i just set this and this to ten thousand, but this one i just set it to zero which is the y one if you want your push to be affected by gravity then just have the y axis equal to zero and you're gonna be set and this last thing i already explained it and then after it hits the player it's going to wait a little bit and then it's going to destroy the body velocity and that's all it does because this body velocity or this force applied would only be applied for 0.1 seconds and that's all it does it pushes the character a little bit and then it destroys the body velocity and that's all i did for the hit box of this first spell so as you can see i know it might sound very complicated if you're new to scripting but i'm telling you right now you practiced this a couple of times and by the third time you've made this it's already like natural to you <laughs> I i'm not capping it's actually not that hard to make and yeah essentially now that i have covered that i actually want to make dodging and pairing for this episode and i don't know if i'll be able to make them fully but i think i will right it's not really that hard and i want to start with pairing no actually let's start with dodging because i actually have the animations for that already done i'm going to recycle some animations that i made for a previous project and yeah so i'll just do that real quick and i'll be back when i've done it all right, so I have a dummy here, right? And inside this dummy, we have the animation that we're going to be using for the roll. We have a back roll, we have a left roll, we have a right roll, and we have a front roll. And essentially, while you're rolling, you're going to have iframes, so pretty much you won't be able to be hit by spells. So, yeah, first thing we got to do is actually save all of these, so I'm going to speed this part up what i just actually no, I'm, not, I'm not even gonna speed it up there's no need to speed this part up. i'm just gonna save all of this to roblox and i'm going to save them into this animation folder inside where is it here so inside the general animations i'm gonna have here something called front roll then another one called back roll then another one called right roll and another one called left roll and essentially i'll just as i'm uploading them i will just put their ids on the corresponding animation instances inside the general animations folder because that's where we will find them right when we actually script this so i'm gonna do that right now all right so i uploaded them and i put the corresponding ids inside of all of the animation instances and all we gotta do now is start scripting all of these things and we're going to script the actual animations for the dodging inside the input manager and you might be why is that well simple because inside the input manager we can detect if the player presses the key that he's supposed to press to dodge which will be q and we can also play animations from a local script in case you didn't know that yes you can play animations locally and all the players will see them and i'll speed this part up and then i'll explain what happened or what i made in this script okay so so far this things that i made i'm explain this real quick this is what you used to check if a certain key is being pressed down because when you press Q you want the player to dodge depending on which key he's holding right and you might be well yeah that's true but essentially this is, this is just what you use to know what key the player was holding when he pressed dodge whether it was W A S or D so it dodges backwards to the right to the left or forwards if that made sense and now I'm going to continue making the script
I finally got it right and as you can see it can roll forwards, backwards, to the left, to the right and if you see my character over here, if you see my character selected, watch how it creates an iframe instance every time I roll, watch this. You see it creates like an iframe instance or an iframe, yeah an iframe instance or an instance called iframe each and every single time I roll, oh I forgot to add like a, a debouncer for the roll but I'm gonna add that now. And yeah it creates an iframe instance and all you gotta do if you want the iframe to actually be applied to your attacks is you go to your attack where you have them stored, in this case we have them stored in the spells vfx no in the spells module so you go to your hitbox which is this one right and here you add another condition so here are the conditions for the effect to actually play right you also add another condition here and not touched char find first child iframes and let's just verify we named that correctly yeah we named that correctly if you have an instance called iframes inside your character value in the server of course like um you, you can't have it locally because if you have it locally they won't show this is just to prevent exploiters from that but if you have an instance called iframes inside your character when the server is looking throughout the script then it won't actually run the effect of the hitbox meaning the spell will just go right through you as if you had dodged it and that's the effect we were, we were looking for right and the thing that we wanted to add to this was also i'll explain this in a moment because this is this is actually going to be kind of like um confusing for a lot of people so f this is pretty much the thing that lets you roll right this is as i said before how you detect what key are they also pressing besides the q and depending on which key they're pressing, it will run this function and pass an argument, meaning the direction of, you know, the key that they're pressing. Because, you know, everybody uses W to move forward, A to move to the left, etc, etc. And inside this function, you pass the direction, right? And inside this function, you have... Ah, it's, it's so hard to explain, man. But, but I'll try to explain it, like, briefly, because it, it, it's... You might get confused if you're new to scripting so essentially these variables over here are variables that we will be using later like the velocity multiplier for the body velocity the push duration meaning how long the character will be pushed for and the corresponding animation meaning the animation of rolling forwards backwards to the left or to the right and here is an a function that gets the direction for the push right this is the function that will get the push for the body velocity so the, essentially you know that body velocities have a velocity property and you need that to know what the what direction the body velocity will be pushed to and essentially this is what this function identifies and it returns it to whatever you called it so yeah it depends on if the direction is if the direction is front back right or left and okay so here I already explained this or did I no I didn't so essentially this here is essentially what you use to get the corresponding animation get the corresponding animation so if it's front then you get the front roll back back roll etc etc you get the animation that you're gonna use within this part of the code and this is where you play the animation give the iframes and also well no this is just where you play the animation actually so you get the animation track right and the animation track here what the reason why i put it outside of the if statement is because we're gonna use the animation track again here right and okay so if there is a corresponding animation meaning if they found it in this piece of code over here then the animation track the animation will load itself into the character to create this animation track and then it will play itself and essentially then it will push the character but it will only push the character if there is an animation track so if there was an error here then it, this won't happen and okay so first of all i made it so it gives the iframes to the character and essentially i created an event that lets me create the iframe instance into whatever character I want and it can also remove it I won't explain that because th the video will be too long but essentially 
you can probably figure it out. It's not that hard, actually. Then I set the butter velocity that we created up here to be inside the humanoid root part of the player that we want to roll, right? And then what I actually did to update the direction of the roll, depending on where you're looking at, is I made a for loop, right? And in the for loop, the the goal will be the push duration that we set up here, up here, right? And it will start in zero and it will go up each loop by 0 0.1 and it will wait 0 0.1 seconds in between loops, right? And it will get, now it will set the body velocity, I mean, <laughs> I can speak. It will set the velocity property of the body velocity equal to whatever it returns from the get direction of the humanoid root part function. And remember, this just gets like the velocity property for the body velocity depending on the direction of the player meaning what direction the player is supposed to roll and it just gets that and it sets it to the velocity property and that way if you turn your camera a little bit to the right when you're rolling then you can actually like change the direction of the roll mid roll so you don't fall off the platform and all that stuff and then after this is done after the duration is over after this loop is done then it destroys the body velocity and it also removes the iframes from the character and this is just for debugging purposes. If it didn't find any animation track, then it will just warn us that no animation track was found. And yeah, that's pretty much the rolling. And it should work. I'm going to test it on another video. But for now, let's get on with the parry. So with the parry, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to speed it up. And when I'm done, I'm going to explain what I did. Alright, I finally finished and it works. I added a cooldown to the parry and I also added a cooldown to the roll or the dodge, whatever you want to call it. And yeah, it works. I already tested it, but I won't show it in this video. I'm sorry that I'm going to end this in another cliffhanger, but the thing is, the video is already long as it is and I don't want to make a two hour long video because... Uh, Almost nobody watches until the end, like, let's be honest. If you watched until this point, let me know, bro, because I'd really be impressed. And, yeah, I'll just... On the next video, I'll show you what I did, explain a couple stuff, and we'll also test the game. I'll probably have made a couple of more spells to make the game a little bit more dynamic. I'm probably I'm gonna make some more UI, maybe some menus, just to equip spells and stuff. And, yeah, essentially, I'm gonna leave it there for today. I don't know when I will be release part 4, because I will have to work quite a bit for that off camera, but I don't know, it just depends on how many people watch this video and how many people actually want to see part 4 of the game, where the game is actually completed, and I actually like test it with other people. If you're interested in that, then let me know in the comments also, and yeah, just keep leveling up, bro. Be safe. And I'll see you when I see you. Peace.